During a period from 1946 to 1952, in a small town in western Germany, the residents heard what resembled a six-gun salute on the 15th of March every year. Some residents made frequent trips to the surrounding hills in hopes of finding the source of the noise, but to no avail, the townsfolk eventually coined the area as Gunpowder Hill. The children of the town even created a legend about it, stating that the soldiers in that time were missing and presumed dead. They had been killed in an execution-style massacre, and were buried somewhere in the hill. The purpose of the six-gun salute was to guide people to the location of the men. On the 15th of March every year, the children would gather at the edge of town, eagerly awaiting the six gunshots to be heard. In late 1951, the hills on the outskirts of a small German town were surveyed for future constructions of a NATO military site. The military base was to consist of a series of deep underground bunkers and weapons supplies in case Soviet invasion occurred. In February of 1952, construction began. Just four weeks later, the crew began digging out a massive 200 feet deep hole in the future underground of the storage bunkers. It was during this time that the crew had found a morbid discovery. As they neared the digging operation, a human hand was seen sticking out of the bottom of the hole. Upon future examination, 27 bodies were discovered at the bottom of a 200 foot deep hole. Dressed in a prisoner of war uniform worn by the allies of the Nazi war camps, a NATO officer ordered the bodies to be exhumed immediately. As the medical team slowly carried the bodies, they looked on in puzzlement. The bodies were remarkably well preserved. Furthermore, the POW uniforms bore a strange insignia, which was unlike any of the men had ever seen before. An orange circle with a single black dash in the middle. However, the most unsettling characteristic were that the faces of the men were exhumed. Their eyes were wide open, and their mouths were sealed shut with an unknown adhesive. The bodies were dispatched to a local morgue for immediate identification and autopsies. That night, the local mortician began his work. However, he found it difficult to concentrate on his task. The eyes of the men began to seem like it was staring back at the mortician from the autopsy table. He shook his head and just rationalized. He thought he had an overactive mind. The mortician took the scalpel and began the first cut to the body's chest. Blood poured from the incision with staggering force. The mortician backed away from the table in shock. Red liquid began running down the table, pooling on the floor below. The eyes of the body began watering. Streaks of tears ran down its face. Soon, the eyes rolled back into the body's head, and the bleeding ceased. In horror, the mortician began to make his way to the door on the verge of nausea. But before catching a glance at the 26 other bodies lying at separate tables, their eyes looked back at the doctors with tangible fear. These men were still alive.